Hi, I'm Molly from CPCAB. We've recently been asking tutors what the most common problems they've had in transitioning to remote teaching and learning um, during these really challenging times. So today I'm talking to Steve from CPCAB, who's going to help us with the technical side of things. Hi, Steve. Hi, Molly. Hi. Um, one of the things that our tutors uh, were finding the most difficult is how to sort of recreate a classroom using remote methods. I wondered if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, there's quite a lot of software out there which is coming to the fore at the moment with the way that people are working remotely. So at a very basic level, if you were to look at recreating a, a remote teaching situation, then you can use stuff lots of the software that's out there like Skype, um, Microsoft Teams, anything that allows you to share video with another person. And to be able to do teaching with that, you can do things like screen sharing. So for example, we're making this call in a program called Zoom. And at the bottom of that, when I move my mouse over the window, I get a little button which says share screen. And that means that it's going to share with you whatever I can see on my screen. So for example, if I wanted to deliver a presentation to you, or if I wanted to share something that's in a Word document, we could click on share screen, and it'll allow me to talk you through what I'm seeing on my screen. So that's quite a, a simple way of um, sort of recreating a real life teaching situation. There's other things that you can do, for example, if you want to share documents, say you wanted uh, students to be able to fill out a form or something or create some paperwork, then you could also use another platform for sharing documents. So you could use something like Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft Teams, or you could even send out documents by email. The main thing is that you are enabling students to be able to access files remotely. Uh, and there's lots of different pieces of software out there, so I can't list out all of them, but we'll maybe put some examples in the description of this video below. That sounds great. And it, and it sounds like you can actually use these applications to have a live classroom or record something or record something and send students uh, resources remotely. So it's a case of deciding what's working best for you and your students. Yeah, I, in the, the software that I was just talking about, I think most of the types of software allow you to do some sort of recording. So, for example, if you were to take Skype, um, which is a very popular piece of software, you can record the call in that. So you can then make that recording available to your students. So, for example, you could send it out to a whole group of students using, for example, Google Drive or Dropbox, make, them, make it available so that they can re-watch what you've gone through in the classroom out of hours. You could even, if you wanted to, set up a YouTube channel. You, it doesn't need to be broadcast. You could just set up a YouTube channel, upload your recordings to that, and then send out a link to those videos to students. It doesn't have to be worldwide broadcast. It can just be on a very local basis. It's just a way of getting content out to a group of people. That's fantastic, isn't it? Because we know that some students just aren't able to access the classroom from home because of commitments at home. So any way that something can be recorded or resources can be sent to them electronically will be fantastic. Thank you. One of the other um, big areas in any uh, learning environment is the work that students do in groups together. That might be um, on a discussion or a task that they've been set. And just wondering, again, what sorts of applications might be helpful to help students work together in, in different groups? So not the whole classroom together, but different groups um, for different tasks. Yeah, so I guess one of the um, more unique features about counselling training is having large groups of students and maintaining interpersonal connection between them as much as possible. And one of the ways of doing that is to be able to see the entire group of students at the same time using video conferencing. That's one of the more challenging, challenging aspects where software hasn't really kept up in, in some respects. So there are a few software packages out there that allow you to have a group video chat and to be able to see a, a group of 20, 30, 40 students at the same time. So, for example, one of the soft pieces of software that's doing really well on that front at the moment because the 
features already out there is Zoom. And that's available both as a free package um, with various restrictions on the amount of time you can use it for, or for a monthly fee, you can use it for an unlimited amount of time. The features that come with it, regardless of whether you're paying for it or not, include the ability to hold group sessions, and you can see up to 49 people on screen at the same time, provided you've got a big enough screen, because if you're using an iPad or a tablet or a phone, you're going to really struggle to see everyone's faces. But the functionality is there to allow you to the whole group to interact. Um, that also, Zoom, the piece of software, allows you to manage a group of participants and create breakout rooms. So I think that's really useful for counselling training if you want to do stuff like triad work, where you split a, a group of students off into little groups. There's some useful features in there for example, where you can split students off into little groups and then they'll be in a, a private room, but the tutor can jump into that room, offer some support, feedback to the students and then hop into another group. So they can almost, you can almost recreate what would happen in a classroom. Uh, there's an, another ability in the Zoom software for people in the, group, the room to raise their hand and the, the tutor will be able to see that on their screen and that acts as a flag to say the student in one of their breakout rooms is looking for some help and then a tutor can go in and uh, check in with them and see what's going on. It sounds fantastic doesn't it actually that's a function that we wouldn't actually have in the the real live classroom scenario so that that's really that's really great and I guess you can also use that for one-to-one -one meetings with students as well those sorts of functions tutorials and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think there's, um, like I say, Zoom is one piece of software that allows you to do that. Uh, for example, in Skype, um, you can also have multiple people in a call, but it's just that it's hard to see multiple people on screen at the same time. And it's harder to manage things like breakout rooms in the software. It's, it's just that uh, Zoom, for example, offers that functionality and is really easy to work with. Fantastic, fantastic. There's one thing that's popped into my mind as we were talking um, and I was thinking about the classroom setting and other settings where some, some, some thoughts are captured um, right in that moment. So traditionally you'd have the flip chart um, and a tutor would be writing on the flip chart or students would be coming up to the board and scribbling things up. Are there any um, applications or bits of software that we can use to help that so that we can capture learning as we're going along. So like a group sharing whiteboard. Yeah, there's various pieces of software that do that. And again, you can combine different technologies. So say we were to use a piece of video conferencing software like Zoom, we were to do a, share, a screen share in there. So I could share my screen with you. Uh, and then I could open up an application on my screen that allows me to draw. Uh, for example, there's a program called Microsoft Whiteboard, which creates what a lot of classrooms would have in them, a whiteboard where you can use a pen to write on it. Um, there's also, for example, Microsoft Teams, which is a whole suite of software, uh, that, sorry, the Microsoft Office and Microsoft 365 is a suite of software. Part of that is something called Microsoft Whiteboard, which allows you to collaborate with other students so you can have a group of however many students all being able to interact on the whiteboard and share different drawings or pieces of text or even images from the web if you want to. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. There's so much um, at, at our uh, fingertips isn't there for us to, to use if we can only just find out where it is so thank you for that. Um, I think where we need to also think about is um, how we're going to make sure that we have got good internet connections and Wi-Fi connections because this is all this is all based on you know a reliable internet source. So have you got any tips about um, you know how we can just check check those things before we get going? Yeah, I think internet connectivity is really being pushed at the moment because everyone's on the web at the same time. And there are a lot of points of failure, which, and it's difficult to really work out whether it's your own internet connection, whether it's just your Wi-Fi signal in your building, whether it's something that's going on locally. There are a few tips that I can give which will help you 
navigate those problems and work out what's going on. So first of all is to check your Wi-Fi connectivity. So try and get your Wi-Fi router as close to you as possible. That, that either means physically moving the router into a different room in your property, in your premises, wherever you're working, or to move yourself closer to that point. And when I'm, what I mean by that is to make sure you've got fewer walls between you and that piece of hardware because the Wi-Fi signal gets broken down the further it has to travel and the more spaces it has to go through. Mm -hmm. There's one other tip to do with that. If you're, say, you're running a training group and you're finding that your connection is dropping out, and that's to, rather than rely on Wi-Fi, to run a cable between your uh, internet router and your computer. And this is specifically for people who are using laptops. So if you've got a laptop, you're, a lot of um, laptops will have a, an internet connection point on them called an ethernet connection. And you'll find a corresponding one of those connections on the back of your router. Uh, and you're, you may already have from your internet provider a, ca a, a cable which can plug one end into your router and one end into your, into your laptop. That bypasses the Wi-Fi signal and that means that you're going to be overcoming any problems that just exist within your house. Um, if you've got a laptop, more modern laptops don't include one of those connections. They, they're, they're wireless entirely. So most laptops will have a USB connection, the thing that we use for mice and keyboards and things. If you don't have an internet connection, if you don't have the uh, Wi-Fi socket, an Ethernet socket on your laptop, you can buy a thing called a, an Ethernet dongle, a USB Ethernet dongle, which is a, just a little connector about this big. You can plug it into the USB connection on your laptop and that will provide you with an Ethernet connection which you can then plug into your Wi-Fi router. So that might be worth investigating if you have if you think that your Wi-Fi connection is the, the limiting factor. Aside from that, you might have some other ways that you can do things. So um, for students, if they're having problems with their internet connection, they might be on a mobile phone, for example. And if they've got a poor Wi-Fi signal, if they've got a data plan with their phone provider, it might be better for them just to do the whole call over 4G, over, over their telephone connection. Um, if they've got, say, unlimited data, they might as well do that. It'll probably be a faster connection than their Wi-Fi connection. And that might just mean that they get the difference to being able to connect to a group properly. There's just one more couple of things to note. You might notice that I'm wearing headphones for this call. I find that makes quite a difference to call quality when you're having a two-way conversation or multi-way conversation. Reason being is that the microphone on, this is a basic pair of headphones that came with my phone, and it includes a little microphone on the cable here. That's very close to my mouth, and so mm -hmm. the audio signal doesn't have far to travel. If you're holding your phone out, say, in front of your face, uh, the, the microphone is further away from your mouth, so it's, gonna, it's not going to be quite such a clear connection um, to the other person. And also it means when you've got headphones in, whatever's being said by the rest of the group can't be heard by anyone else that might be in the building. So if, you, if you've got kids in the background, if you've got partner or other people, you've got a little bit more privacy and it, it might mean it's easier to hear what else is happening uh, within the group. And, and just one last point on the, the visual side of things, maintaining that facial connection with the group is important. And the place that you sit in can make quite a difference to that. So over to my right over here, is a window and I've particularly put myself in this place that I've got light coming in from one side of me. I haven't got light behind me, mm -hmm. otherwise that would throw me into silhouette and you wouldn't be able to see what my face was doing. So <laughs> I'd say try and keep, uh, try and not have a window behind you when you're doing a video call. That will just improve your video quality a little bit and it'll make it easier for other people to see you. And of course, um, anybody can practice the shots, can't they, as they're starting any video conference calling by just arranging things and moving around in the room to see what works best for them. Yeah, usually most pieces of software give you a little preview before you go into a chat. So you can use that to position yourself and get it set up as best as possible. And make sure, most of all, that you're comfortable and you've got a cup of tea or something with you. <laughs> yes, very much. 
Thank you, Steve. The technology is so important, even though it's uh, such a, a side topic from what we're studying here. But in this remote world, we, we need to find ways to work with it. And you've provided some really, really useful guidance there for some of the problems that we know that our tutors are facing. So thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Molly. And everyone do check the description of this video below. We'll put in links to any of the software we've mentioned or any other places to find out more information.